Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. Today I thought we would talk about gravity. So I thought the easiest way to kind of demonstrate gravity and go through all of its options is by using particles. So I've already kind of set up a particle in my scene here. So first let's go to the display, UI elements, and in the UI elements menu here I'm going to turn on time slider and range slider to get some uh, playback animation controls. And in my scene I've already set up this emitter, particle emitter here, and I do have a video going over uh, particle emitters. Feel free to click over here and check that out if you want more information about creating an emitter of particles and controlling all that stuff. So I'm going to hide the grid so I can see better. There's my emitter there and I'm going to hit play. You can see what I have here is an emitter just kind of shooting out all these particle spheres to the right and they kind of spread in a little bit of a cone and they last for a few seconds and then they kind of die off. And I have about 500 frames that I am playing and then it kind of starts over and plays back from the beginning again. So this is our setup here, what we have to begin with. So we're going to apply gravity to these particles. What gravity does is makes the particles by default fall down, right? That's what gravity does. Everything that falls down is being pulled by gravity toward the ground. So Maya has a uh, gravity function that you can use to simulate that effect in your Maya scenes. I'm going to stop the animation and rewind. Then I'll play a little bit, stop and so first I need to select the object I want to apply the gravity to. In this case, it would be the particles. So I select the particles, and not, not the emitter, but the particles. Then I, in, under my Dynamics menu, I go to Fields, and here's Gravity. So I'm going to the Options first. So here's our Gravity Options. I'm going to go to Edit, Reset Settings, and make sure everything is at their default values. And we're not going to go into too many of the options at first, we're just going to apply the gravity to the particles, but the first thing we have here is gravity field name. So you can give the gravity field a name, a specific name if you want to. If you don't fill, put anything in this uh, box, it'll just kind of give it a generic gravity one name or something like that. So we can leave a blank or if you want to you can type something in either way. And once you've done that, just hit create. So you see I didn't have anything in the, the name field, so it called it gravity field 1. And it placed this little node here at the origin, which is right where my emitter is. I'm just going to move it to the side so you can see it. And this is this little icon of three arrows pointing down. Okay? So now that we have that in our scene and we had our particles selected when we created it, so it applied the gravity field to the particles. I'm going to rewind my scene to the beginning and press play. So you can immediately see the effect. Particles are emitting from the emitter and being pulled downward right away. So that's gravity in a nutshell. If that's all you need to happen, you can just go from there. But of course, we like to go over all of the options so let's select our gravity field here and hit Control A to open the attribute editor. Then we have our gravity field one tab, and this is our transform attributes. This is something that every object in Maya has. This just t tells you where it is in 3D space, essentially. So I'm just going to close that for now. And now we have our gravity field attributes. Magnitude is probably the most important, or at least the most prominent. Uh, attribute of the gravity and magnitude tells Maya how strong the gravity is. Now if I'm not mistaken the default value of 9.8 is the magnitude that most simulates real gravity. So the default value kind of simulates real gravity strength on an object. But of course you can adjust this. It doesn't have to pull as strong or it can pull stronger. If we slide this slider down to negative values you see that that gravity can go up for instance and you can pull this back 
to a small negative number and it just kind of flows up gradually so you know this is a reverse gravity effect you can and you could use this for something like smoke or you know something that like steam coming out of a teapot or whatever using particles or such and you can have it flow upwards you can also slide this to the right in a positive value and it will flow downwards again and again this is a low value so 2.9 as opposed to the 9.8 as it was before so the gravity is not as strong as it was and we can increase this value and it will just plummet really quickly with a really high value so magnitude is how strong either positive or negative the gravity's effect is on the object you can just slide this up and down and this is animatable if you right click it you can say set key and set keyframes for how strong the magnitude is at any point along this timeline so at frame 60 it's negative, at frame 50 it's positive, at frame 200 it's negative again and you can kind of get this animated effect of it doing you know, something like this so that's the magnitude okay so if I set my magnitude back to the default value so next we have is attenuation and by default it's set to zero so what attenuation is is how strong the effect of the gravity field has on the object at a distance so the further away the object that is affected is from the field and this is and this little uh, icon is the field's like placement I'm going to put it back right here at the origin of the emitter just for the sake of demonstration because if we have it a distance away like this that affects how the attenuation affects uh, the result so I'm going to move it right here. So attenuation right now is zero. So what that means is the effect is 100% at all distances. So there's, there is no fall off on the effect of the field with attenuation of zero. So I'm going to rewind this in play. And you can change the attenuation, increase it. And you can see kind of how the gravity is affected. So the higher the attenuation, the quicker the field does not have effect on the object. With, at this distance, attenuation of 2.5 or whatever, the gravity hardly has any effect at all. Let's go down a little bit to say 1, around 1. You can see it is going down right through here, and then they kind of keep going in that direction. They're not being pulled further down. If you notice back at attenuation of zero, the particle gets pulled down and it's going straight down like this. Increase this attenuation a little bit. And the particle's not, not being pulled down quite as quickly. So one way to demonstrate attenuation better is by doing that back and forth effect again before whenever I wobbled the magnitude up and down the particles that were going down would then go up and go down and up again even as they were far away from the emitter because the attenuation was set to zero if we increase our attenuation and do that wobble effect you can see that the particles that were going down continue to go down because the effect of the gravity being pulled back up is too far away to affect it. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. So the higher the attenuation, the greater the fall-off effect the gravity has. So the gravity only affects around this area. So I'm going down, then I shoot it back up, and these particles keep going down. Because they're beyond the attenuation uh, range. So hopefully that kind of makes sense on what attenuation does. And the next uh, attribute here is direction, and by default direction is negative 1, which when magnitude is at its default value of 9.8, and we'll go ahead and put attenuation back to 0, negative 1 in the y-axis would be down, which is why gravity goes down. You can, of course, have gravity go different directions if you want to. Instead of going down like this, we could have it go to the side. So if I make direction 0 in the y-axis, you'll see now that gravity is essentially turned off. But now I could say in the z-axis, let's make it positive 1. 
So now gravity is flowing to the right. Or you could say positive 1 in x and z. And now gravity is flowing at a diagonal. So you can definitely uh, play with this to get different directions for how your gravity flows. Let's make this, there we go, positive 1 in the y, positive 1 in the z. And now it's really going at a high angle like this. And so, of course, if your magnitude goes into the negative value, it will reverse the direction. So even though I have a positive axis as my direction, or say, to take y back to zero, direction is positive z, positive one in the z axis going this way. If magnitude goes to negative, it'll go the other way, the negative z. So those are the main kind of attributes of how gravity works for the most part. Okay, so I got my magnitude and direction back to the default values. So let's move on to distance. Let's open this next folder here. We have distance and it says use max distance on or off. If we stop the animation here, we, you can see use max distance has a checkbox. If we check it, then the max distance slider becomes available as well as fall off curve. So use max distance, it kind of sounds like attenuation where you're talking about a distance away from the uh, gravity field to take effect, which that's true. Uh, attenuation is a fall off effect. So over the course of time, it'll kind of gradually change based on how high the attenuation is. Use max distance is more of a, like a circle of influence around the emitter. And once it gets beyond that circle, it's literally turned off. So a better way to demonstrate this, I think, is to move the gravity field over here to the side because it's still affecting it it's just the gravity field itself is a distance away so let me rewind and hit play so use max distance is turned on and right now max distance is zero so notice that my fields over here and gravity and the gravity field is not affecting the particle at all so as the animation plays let me slowly increase this max distance Oh, there it goes. So I increased it up to about almost 8, and then suddenly the gravity starts taking effect. If I decrease back down, you see it literally just kind of turns off once that field of gravity increases its distance to take effect over here. So use max distance, you can kind of work with attenuation. If I increase attenuation, you can see the max distance is still high enough to affect the emitter, but as the particles leave that field of influence, the attenuation takes effect. If we increase the max distance, because our attenuation is still a high value, they're still kind of falling off. Take our attenuation back to zero. You can see the effect is its maximum uh, amount, even at a further distance. So you kind of work together with attenuation and max distance to kind of get the flow working the way you want it to. So along with uh, max distance slider, there is a fall off curve. So if you don't want the max distance to kind of sharply end at the very end of the max distance uh, amount, you can apply a fall off to it using this fall off curve so it's not quite as sharp a change. So that's using a max distance on or off. We'll turn it off for now and close distance. Next we have volume control attributes. 